Whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry, I had to jump in. As I was filming that sequence, my whole plan for this video was to do something very similar to one of my previous videos where I just talked about the in-camera transitions that I did. And if you want to see that, I'll put a link to it up there. As I was going along with that video, I kept thinking to myself, man, this is not going to be anywhere near as good as the last one I did. So I had to go back to the drawing board and try and replan things, think about how I can make this video different, but still talk about the same thing that I wanted to talk about. So after a little bit of replanning, a little bit of thinking, it finally dawned on me, man, I can give you guys some tips on just these in-camera transition videos. So because of that, I'm going to give you guys five tips for in-camera transition videos. Tip number one is movement. When it comes to in-camera transition videos, the biggest thing is movement. The types of movements that you make with your camera are going to either make or break an in-camera transition video. So what I mean by that, you want to make sure all of your movements match up. So if I end one clip with a certain movement, I want to make sure my next clip begins with the same type of movement. If I end one clip panning the camera to the left, I want to make sure that my next clip begins with me panning the camera to the left. That way when you put the clips together, the transition is nearly seamless. And if you put the clips together at the exact right moment, you're not going to be able to tell when the transition happens with the naked eye. Now if you really try to slow down the footage and see when the transition happens, yes you're going to see when that transition actually happened. But if you play things at normal speed and you have everything timed right, you're not going to be able to tell when the transition happens. And for me, that is a whole thing with in-camera transition videos. If you can't tell when the transition happens, you have an effective video. So with the sequence that you're going to see at the end of the video, I think I did a really good job of hiding all of those transitions and putting them together in a way where you can't really tell when the transitions happen. Well, you know when the transition happens, but your eyes don't really catch the transition itself. My second tip for you guys is color. Color is going to play a huge role when it comes to these in-camera transitions. So you know you need to have the movement down, but that movement needs to be with colors that are very similar. So for example, with the sequence that you're going to see later on, the dirt that I was around was different colors all over the place. That was mostly because of the position of the sun, it was creating shadows everywhere, and the shadows created somehow different colored dirt. I'm not really sure how else to explain that, but every, everywhere I was looking, the colors were different. So creating some of these transitions was a lot harder than I initially thought they would be. I didn't want to end one scene in the shadows of the dirt and then begin the next scene with the bright dirt in the sun. If I did that continuously, then you'd be able to tell when the transition happens. And the whole point of these in-camera transitions is to try and hide the transition itself the best you can. And this is why you need to try and match up colors the best that you can. If I make my transition between something very dark and very light, the transition probably isn't going to work out too well. So you need to make sure when you end one movement, the next movement begins with something that is very similar in color. Another example that I can give you right off the top of my head is with the sky. In the sequence that I shot, the sky was completely blank, there was no clouds, there was nothing. So it was just a completely blue sky. If I started my movement and panned up, and I began the next movement from the ground and panned up as well, Yes, the movements were the same, but if I put those clips together, it's not going to make sense and you're going to be able to see the transition. Because I can't go from the bright blue of the sky to the dirt and expect the transition to look seamless. So always, always keep that in mind. Always keep colors in mind. My third tip that I have for you is sound design. Now sound design is going to play a much bigger role than anybody initially thinks in any of their videos. When I first started making videos, sound design was something that I never even thought about. But the further I went along with making videos, I realized that sound design really adds another layer to your videos. And this is especially true when it comes to in-camera transition videos. Sound design is just adding little sound effects here and there just to enhance your video a little bit. So for example, I add a lot of whoosh sounds to these types of videos. Not only does it make the video itself better, but it adds that bit of realism to the video. When it comes to sound design, you want to make sure that the sounds you actually add are believable and make sense. I don't want to move the camera and add in some sort of duck sound because that's just not going to make sense. I'm adding a whoosh sound because that makes sense with the camera movement that you're seeing. So keep that in mind. Sound design makes the video better, it enhances the video, and it makes it seem more realistic. My fourth tip for you all is speed ramps. Speed ramps is something that can really enhance your videos even more. It can take your videos to that next level. It's nice seeing movements happen in your videos, but speed ramps add just a different dynamic to those videos. So some of the transitions I had didn't work that well together, but I knew adding a speed ramp could really mask those transitions so you couldn't tell when the transition happened. 
If you slow the footage down, you can really tell where the transition happens, but because of the speed ramp, you can't tell when the transition actually happens. So speed ramps, like sound design and like the color and like movements, they add different layers and add a different dynamic to those videos. My fifth and final tip for you guys when it comes to in-camera transition videos is music. When it comes to music, sometimes you pick the music beforehand and sometimes you pick it afterwards. The choice is all up to you. If you know exactly what you're going to shoot and you know exactly the type of mood that you're going for, then the music that you pick is going to be easy. So in instances like that, you can pick your music afterwards. In the cases where you pick your music beforehand, that is something that can actually help your videos in the end as well. When you pick your music beforehand, everything can become cohesive at the beginning of your process. You'll have the music in your head and you'll know exactly what you need to do. But for the sequence that I filmed, I did not pick the music beforehand. This was an instance where I picked the music afterwards. I knew all of the shots that I wanted to get already. I know the type of mood that I want to have for the video. So because of that, I think picking the music afterwards was going to benefit me the most. And picking the music after isn't going to affect me that much in the editing process because I know I can readjust and edit things the way I need to just to match up the music. And that's another thing with the music. You want to make sure that the sequence that you have matches up with your music. Matching up your video to the music will only make your video that much better. If the video that you have does not match up with the music, then things are just going to seem a little bit off. For example, if you have something that's very upbeat and the video just doesn't match that type of music, then everything's going to be off and your audience isn't going to be nearly as pleased. You want to make sure the music matches the mood that you're trying to set for the entire video. And you want to make sure that your transitions happen on a beat. When people are watching your videos and they can hear the beat, they're more than likely going to be expecting something to happen on the beat. So you want your videos to keep up with the rhythm of the music. If you're having all of these transitions happen and it's not happening on a beat, although the video might not be that bad, the video isn't going to be nearly as good as it could be. So yeah, those are just five quick tips on in-camera transition videos. I'm a big fan of in-camera transition videos, so you're probably going to be seeing a lot of them from me. And eh, yeah, that, I'm, I'm okay with that. Oh yeah, I completely ruined the first viewing that you had of the sequence that I was going to show you, so that's, that's on me. But uh, yeah, I guess now's a good time to show you it again. And there you have it. That was the seven magic mountains B-roll sequence with only in-camera transitions. I thought it was pretty good. I thought it was cool, you know. Uh, only in-camera transitions, you know, it, it takes a bit of planning and uh, it's not the easiest thing to do. I think, I think just because of that, just because of that, that is something that should cause you to hit that like button. Hit that like button for me and you know that that'll put a smile on my face and i have a pretty good smile so i know you want to see it more right also be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already and when you hit that subscribe button be sure to hit that bell next to it so you're updated whenever i put out a new video so yeah uh, be sure to leave a comment below and uh and you know what Tell me if any of those transitions that I had in this video were just completely obvious and there was no hiding any of the movements that I did. I'm a grown man. I can handle some constructive criticism. Constructive criticism. There we go. I can handle some of that. So, yeah. Leave a comment below. Do it. And that's it. I don't have anything else for you. Hopefully you guys like the, the new office setup that I got. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's the finished product yet, but hey, it's getting there. Slowly getting there. And uh, yeah, I'm going to go... Go try and work on that as well. Try and finish that up. So uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.